Hello and welcome back to Super Taco Crew. We'll be continuing where we left off, which if you recall is after Edgar make the decision to return the chip over to its rightful owner. After Max basically told him, you know, hey, this chip was either belonged to or was manufactured by this person. They're deceased, but they do have a living relative. Um, I think it was their daughter. And because Edgar doesn't want anything bad to happen to basically James and the rest of them, um, he wants to return the chip and be done with it. And yeah, they basically all told him like, hey, you probably don't have to do that. You could just probably get rid of it. And James himself was more adamant about um, Edgar not basically going and returning it because he thinks something bad's going to happen. But yeah, Edgar wouldn't listen uh, anywho so yeah let us continue on to chapter three i believe which is ignition edgar woke up yawning heavily james was by his side still snoring it's beginning to feel almost routine like i'm in a new normal after all the revelations from the day before, Edgar was glad to have a date just to relax. He showered and made coffee. James woke up soon after. Uh, morning, dude. Morning, sunshine. Did you smell the coffee? I did, actually. You mind if I nap some? I'll make it for you, actually. You like cream and sugar? Yes and yes. Edgar made the coffee and handed it to James. James chugged his coffee in one fell swoop, much to Edgar's chargon. He then took a shower. Guess we're up pretty early, huh? Well, I've been up for way longer. It's almost noon. Yeah, it's early for me. Uh, you're hopeless. I know. You don't have anything planned today, right? No life or death high stakes situation? Nope. I believe the life or death situation is scheduled for Tuesday. How about we go for a nice walk then? A walk? Huh. Yeah, just an ordinary run-of-the-mill walk. Just to get some fresh air. I don't know. What if they're still chasing me? Come on, don't worry about it. You can't live your life in constant fear. I guess I could use some fresh air. <sighs> Alright, let's do it. Awesome. But if I die, it's your fault. I take full responsibility. They walked into the dark city. Somehow the recycled air felt fresher in Edgar's lungs today. Edgar and James walked for what felt like an hour, away from the city center. Eventually, they reached what looked like some kind of trail. There was a sign nearby. It read Scarlet Highlands Entrance. We're not seriously climbing this, are we? Come on, it'll be fun. You don't have to do the whole thing, just a little strip. Ugh, alright, let's go. James smiled and walked into the path. Edgar followed his lead. The trail was surrounded by some sort of strange trees. They were completely still, made up of some type of panels. Despite this, Edgar could hear birds chirping away somewhere. So, what do you think? It's very peaceful here. Yeah, definitely. I like to come here to get my mind off of things. As they ascended, the air started to get more chilly. They walked the trail until they hit a narrow path with towering walls of rock on either side. James started carefully shimmying in between the walls. Are you sure this is safe? Totally. I do it all the time. Edgar started following him through the narrow passage. It was easier for him since he was much smaller. Oh, be careful here. Sometimes boulders can fall off from up above. Why? Why would you curse me with that knowledge? That's horrible. Ha, <laughs> don't worry. I mean, it's pretty unlikely. It hasn't happened to me yet. With my luck, I'll get hit three times before we exit. Almost there. 
They finally exited the narrow path, and Edgar heaved a sigh of relief. See? That wasn't so bad. Ugh, I need to take a rest. I know a good spot. Just a few minutes that way. They continued on the path until James diverted from it. They then went a little while longer and stopped at a small cliff. From this place, Edgar could see the city lights underneath him. What do you think? It's beautiful. I think so too. James walked over and sat on a log. He tapped the spot next to him. Edgar walked over and took a seat next to him. Ew, my legs are tired already. I don't have the stamina. It's alright. I don't mind taking a break. Edgar watched the dancing lights of the city life. The only thing that he could hear was the faint hum of electricity and a bird singing its tune. So, I was wondering. Edgar looked over quizzically. James seemed to be hesitating and blushing slightly. How did you learn to break into trucks? Edgar blinked. Oh, um... Sorry, that kinda came out of nowhere, huh? Oh, it's alright. Uh, just don't judge me, okay? I won't promise. You'll always be my friend no matter what. Edgar looked away. He felt a surge of warmth. Well, it's a long story, so I'll try to keep it short. James nodded softly, his eyes eager and calm. I came to the city when I was very young. It was me and my mom. We had nothing at all. Just to survive, I had to steal constantly. Food, clothing, just the stuff that you need to live. Edgar looked down and shoveled branches with his feet. And you know, some people took notice. I'm not sure how they found me, but there was this group. They promised that they could help me, that I could score big if I just helped them out with some stuff. So I just got better at sneaking around, being places I don't belong, and taking things that aren't mine. Edgar shifted around, a crow cawed in the distance. So you were friends with these guys? Not really. It was just business. I could sneak into places that they couldn't, and they paid me. You are pretty small. You can fit almost anywhere, huh? James grabbed Edgar's side. Edgar slapped his hand away playfully. Hey, don't tease me. Ha, huh, sorry, sorry. Please keep going. Anyways, one night I was tasked with breaking into a high-end nightclub and cracking open the safe. Nothing unusual. Uh-huh. The thing is, it was a trap. The ones responsible were the ones who were using me the whole time. What? Why would they betray you? The cops were hot on their trail. They needed a fall guy, someone to take all the blame. Then they could have a clean slate. That's horrible. Yeah, I know. So, what happened then? I narrowly dodged the cops, somehow. I ran back home to warn my mom, but... The cops were already there. I couldn't go in. Oh no. Yeah, so I laid low for a while, and when I went back, she was gone. What happened to her? I don't know. I tried looking everywhere, asking around, but I never found a clue. That's terrible. I'm so sorry. Thanks. I hope one day that I'll find her again. Me too. That's when I stopped being a criminal. I tried to start a new, honest life. Well, until our current situation happened. If there's anything that I can do to help, let me know. Well, doing stuff with you is a nice distraction. I definitely appreciate it. What a crazy story though. I'm amazed that happened to my seemingly ordinary friend. It's like a cheesy superhero origin story, isn't it? Heh, <laughs> kind of. Except instead of a hero, I'm just a cook. Hey, you're a hero to taco lovers everywhere. Heh, <laughs> whatever. You know, even though it's a sad story, I'm kind of glad it happened, or else I wouldn't have met you. Me too. Oh, well, thanks. I'm glad to have met you two, and the past is the past. No use trying to change it. 
they sat in silence, enjoying the breeze. I think we should head back soon. These trees go dark at night, and we don't want to be here when that happens. It must be scary as heck here at night. Yeah, all sorts of strange beasts appear. James made an angry face and raised his claws at Edgar. And they're ferocious! The wolf started tickling Edgar. Hey, <laughs> cut it out! Roar! They laughed for a bit and finally decided to go home. The walk home was much easier as it was downhill. As they went down, Edgar reflected on his story. What could he have done differently to change things? Was this fate or... Ooh, finally made it back. You're telling me my legs are facing capital punishment for murdering me. Haha, <laughs> let's go lay down then. Don't gotta tell me twice. They jumped into bed as if they had been doing it for years. James put on some movie about a singing poltergeist and his undead friends. Everyone was spooked at first, but by the end, they were singing and dancing in various musical numbers. Hey, thanks for talking to me today. I like hearing your story. No problem. Maybe one day I'll tell you another one. Maybe with a happy ending. James smirked. I look forward to that. Edgar laughed softly. They stayed up for a while longer, discussing various things until they fell asleep. Edgar woke up with a pronounced soreness in his legs. Ow, my legs. That morning was the same as usual. Edgar did his routine. As he was leaving, he made sure to look at the wolf. He was snoring softly without a care in the world. Have a good day today, okay? James shifted a bit, and Edgar left with a faint smile. Morning, Jesse. Morning, sugar. Hey, Edgar. Good to see you. Hey, uh, how's it going? Not bad at all. Another day in paradise. They worked the kitchen like usual. As they did, Edgar was thinking about tomorrow. He would have to confront Mary Hamilton. Although he had managed to sound confident in front of his friends, he really didn't know if his plan would work. The more he thought about it, the more he felt like running away. Hey Edgar, is something the matter? Oh, uh... Edgar realized that he put way too much cilantro on a taco. It was completely covered. Uh, sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Ari furrowed his brows. You want to talk about it? Well, it's just something that I have to do tomorrow. It's really important, and... What is it? I can't really talk about it. Sorry. Edgar trusted Ari, but he didn't want to get him involved. Too many people were involved already. Ari stared at the grill, flipping a large fajita over. Well, whatever it is, I hope it goes well. You're a good guy. Remember, Edgar. Thanks. Don't worry too much about me. Hopefully, if everything goes well, it will be like nothing happened. All right, then. Just promise you'll be back, okay? I like having you around, kid. Hey, I'm not a kid. I'm a grown man. Sure, sure. They continued working the rest of the shift without much fuss. Finally, the end of the shift arrived, and they both went home. Edgar entered the apartment. James was in his room watching something. Hey, Edgar, that you? Hey, James, it's me. Just checking. Edgar grinned and laughed to himself. He walked to the bedroom. James was lying in the covers, looking comfy. How'd your day go today? It went by really quickly. Just flew by. I'm glad to hear that. Edgar walked over and sat on the bedside. Honestly, I've been freaking out about tomorrow all day. Any chance that I can still talk you out of it? Nope. Damn it. I just hope my plans work. Well, whatever you do, don't tell your plan to anyone. Why not? In movies, whenever someone shares a plan, it always fails. But whenever the plan is secret, it ends up working. 
Yeah, but they still discuss the plan, right? It's just not shown on screen. Shh, don't question the logic. Just trust me. Besides, if anyone can succeed at this, it's the Master Thief over here. Master Thief? I'm a beginner at best. Hmm, I don't think so. Give yourself some credit. Edgar went into the covers. They talked about a few more things, and after a while, it was lights off. Edgar tried to sleep but couldn't. He couldn't even imagine how tomorrow would go. His brain worked over and over, imagining all the different ways that it could go wrong, the different slip-ups that might get him killed. Eventually, he just tired himself out and slept. The morning came. Edgar did his usual routine, taking a shower, then making coffee. James slept, slurring loudly, like always. The normalcy of this morning was refreshing. It helped him focus on the day ahead. <sighs> right. I gotta go scope out the venue. Edgar downed the rest of his coffee and left. After a long walk, Edgar arrived at the Stanton Hotel. So this is where the fundraiser is going to happen. It looked well kept and new. Edgar saw a few well-dressed patrons walking in and out. I bet one night costs more than a month of rent. He walked over to the entrance and entered the lobby. The hotel lobby was massive with high ceilings and ornate furnishings. A red carpet led to the contemporary sculpture and crimson curtains draped over gargantuan windows. There was a Siamese cat at the front desk, although he was average height. He looked comically small compared to the mass of space surrounding him. Hello, may I help you, sir? Hi, I was wondering if it's possible to use your restroom. Um, of course, sir. All the way down this hall and to your left. Thanks. The cat's tone was even, but Edgar couldn't help but notice a side eye as he walked away. He walked into the restroom. It was very minimalistic and had fancy water fountains that gently released water onto your paws. Edgar couldn't help but admire it and lost himself in a fantasy of being able to stay in a place like this. <sighs> Maybe one day. He looked around and took a note of things. He walked back into the lobby and passed the cat who was standing very still, eyeing him. Say, that's a nice vest you got on. What color is that? Maroon? I believe it's a burgundy, sir. Ah, yeah, of course. Thank you. Edgar smiled and walked outside. The day carried on until it was nighttime again. Edgar stood on the roof of the building across the hotel. He straightened his cuffs on his new white shirt, tugged on his new burgundy vest, and adjusted his new black bow tie. Stealing from department stores? How uncivilized of me. He contemplated whether he should return the clothes. Maybe it would be better to donate them. That seemed like something Raven Cap would do. Ah, uh, okay, gotta focus. He looked down. It was almost time for the fundraiser to begin. One by one, expensive-looking cars would drive by and drop someone off. The guests looked distinguished as they walked inside. Their mannerisms and the way that they carried themselves indicated wealth. It was a pickpocket's dream. Edgar shook his head. We're not here to steal. We're here to give this thing back. He took the box out of his pocket and opened it for the tenth time that day. The golden triangle gleamed back at him. He put it back in his pocket. After a few more minutes, he spotted her. It was unmistakable. Mary Hamilton had arrived. Hello, Mary. She was a very thin white cat in a beautiful black silk dress. She completely stood out from the others, almost a radiant presence. Huh. No bodyguards or anything. Maybe she isn't well known. Did you really send someone after me? Edgar breathed in and out. No time to think, just time to stick to the plan. He walked back down the fire escape and towards the building. Although it was tempting to break into a door, all of the doors were most certainly alarmed. He had another trick up his sleeve. He went towards the back of the hotel and around it. He then spotted the small windows outside the restroom he had been in earlier. He looked around to make sure that no one could see. 
Then he grabbed onto the ledge and pulled himself up. He saw a shadow inside the restroom, so he ducked back down. Ah, not yet. He peeked again and saw the restroom was empty. All right, let's go. He took out a dull ice brick, pressing it against the center of the window and slowly increasing pressure. As he did, he stared at the door, making sure no one came in. Finally, the window shattered into a thousand pieces, the glass scattered on the floor. He scraped the remaining glass on the side and jumped through, rolling onto the ground. He placed a decoy brick next to the broken glass. Any would-be detective would be fooled. Quickly, he exited the restroom and walked down the hall. A hotel staff member came barreling through. Hey, did you hear that? Yeah, I think it came from over there. I'm not sure, though. The staff member continued past Edgar. Phew. I'm officially in. He walked into the lobby. The fundraiser was already underway with many artworks being displayed in view. Edgar scanned the room and spotted Mary, talking with the bloodhound. I gotta get to her, but I need an excuse. He walked into the kitchen where the servers were coming from. Inside the kitchen, chefs were preparing hors d'oeuvres and bite-sized sushi. These look so good. I gotta bring James here sometime. He walked into the wine cellar and looked inside. He hated wines, but he knew which ones were considered good. Mmm, this one. He grabbed a nice Malbec wine and a glass. He put them on a platter. I guess being a server finally came in handy. Edward walked outside with his best posture. Mary was now standing alone in front of a large painting. Edgar walked over nonchalantly. Miss Hamilton? Mary turned around in surprise. Her eyes were a beautiful deep blue. Yes? Edgar did not feel like Mary recognized him. If she did, she was good at hiding it. Uh, courtesy of the house, madam. Oh, uh, thank you. Edgar handed her a glass and poured the wine. Are you enjoying the night so far? Yes, actually. I really like this painting. She looked at the large painting. It was contemporary with reds and oranges blended together. What do you think about it? Mm. It kind of looks like the sun. Mm. Is that sunset like really this color? Kind of like a fire. It reminds me of the sunset. Yes, I agree. It's as if the artist is sharing an experience with us. Just a simple arrangement of colors and you could share a part of yourself. It's quite amazing. That's a beautiful sentiment. Oh, listen to me go on and on. Don't mind me. I just like rambling about art to anyone who will listen. She smiled and Edgar saw the smile wrinkles in her eyes. I'm sorry, but I need to tell you something. Oh, what is it? Edgar reached into his pocket and pulled out the box. She looked at it, confused. I'm sorry, uh, what is this? Open it. She took the box gently from her hand and opened it. Almost immediately, she closed the box and took a deep breath. Edgar started whispering. Sorry, I didn't know how else to get this to you. You are the owner, correct? So, you're the one who... Yeah, it was me. Look, I just don't want any trouble. I know I've been followed for having this thing. I don't know if you did it, but just take your triangle chip thing, and I'll be on my Mary. Mary covered the box with her paws. She looked worried. Please, listen. Mary was now whispering very quietly. Edgar almost couldn't hear her over the noise. You need to keep this as far away from me as possible. I don't know who is watching me. But doesn't this belong to you? It was taken from my father. They want to use it to... Mary Hamilton. A sight for sore eyes indeed. A large hyena came over, smiling. Therian, I didn't expect to see you here. Come on, you know I can't resist a good get-together with so many wonderful people. Therian picked his teeth with a toothpick. So sorry to interrupt, by the way. 
He looked at Edgar. Were you placing an order? If so, I would like more sushi. Why is it always small sushi, though? I'm a hungry hyena. Um, right away, sir. Madam. Edgar started to leave, confused as to what to do. Achoo! Mary sneezed into her elbow. I'm so sorry. May I borrow your handkerchief? She looked at Edgar, pleadingly. Uh, sure thing. Edgar gave her the handkerchief. She wiped her nose softly on it and handed it back to Edgar. Sorry, I have terrible allergies. Yes, the air is quite dry in here. Now please, waiter, get me my sushi. Edgar smiled half-heartedly and bowed out. He wrapped the handkerchief and put it in his pocket. Mary had handed him the chip back. His mind was racing. What the hell did she give it back for? He went inside the kitchen, and when no one was looking, exited through the back door. Edgar walked the streets silently. He hated having this box. He felt like just throwing it away and never having to deal with it again. But something stopped him. He still wasn't sure what. Why did she just give it back to him? Why didn't she just keep it if it was so important? Edgar entered the apartment, his head spinning. As he entered, James looked up from his phone and ran up to hug Edgar. You're finally back! I was so worried! I couldn't stop thinking about... Ow! Too tight! Too tight! Oh, sorry. James let go. I get carried away sometimes. Heh, <laughs> it's alright. James gave him his toothy grin. Edgar felt himself turn red and turned away out of embarrassment. But you didn't have to worry. I didn't run into any crazy goons this time. So, did you return it? Well, no. Edgar took the little box out of his pocket. What happened? Edgar sighed and sat on the couch. Well, I found Mary, but she didn't want to take the chip back. She said someone else stole it in the first place. We didn't get to have much of a conversation because some jerk put it in. She also seemed really worried, like this thing is dangerous in the wrong hands. James sat next to him. Wow, I wonder who stole it before you did. I don't know. My head hurts. I'm too tired to even think straight. That's okay, we don't have to talk about it now. There was a silence for a few moments as they both stared into space. Well, maybe we can watch something to get your mind off of it? And we can think of what to do later? I guess it can't hurt. Alright, let's go. James got up and extended his hand. Edgar reached up and let himself be pulled onto his feet. The two walked into the bedroom and onto the bed. What do you want to watch? Anything, really. Alright, I'll pick something. James browsed for a while, but Edgar didn't pay much attention. He couldn't stop thinking about Mary, how terrified she sounded. She almost didn't want to touch the chip, much less take it back. And her slick move, giving the chip back to Edgar, like she didn't want to be seen. Uh, this one good? Oh, uh, uh, what is it? It's about clowns, from outer space. Who murder? Well, that sounds like a nightmare fuel. Let's watch it. Alright then. If it gets too scary for you, you can hold on to me. The idea of holding on to James's large, defined bicep momentarily overwhelmed Edgar. St whatever, I can handle it. James laughed. Instantly, Edgar forgot about Mary and the chip. The movie was pretty scary, but Edgar couldn't stay awake. He struggled to keep his eyes open, the movie becoming blurry and out of focus. At some point, he passed out. Chapter 4, Sparks. Obviously, these are going to be pretty short, I guess. But I'm going to leave it here for today. So, again, yes, this is pretty short. But, you know, shorter episodes usually do well. <laughs> Anyways, um, but um, Edgar was able to return the chip to Mary Hamilton. Unfortunately, she promptly returned it back to him. Um, The hyena, I take it is either a comp 
is somebody having to do with cybernetics, probably with robotics. And my guess is that the reason that she gave the chip back to him right then and there is because she doesn't want people like him to have it. And I'm totally guessing because, uh, I mean, you don't just give random characters sprites. So he can't just be a random character. The person that probably stole the chip in the first place was probably the hyena, or at least whoever the hyena works with or for. So yeah. So, you know, write down in the comments what you think is, you know, happening. And thank you all for watching Super Taco Crew. Obviously, James is in love with Edgar. By now, we should all know that. And um, if you would like to play Super Taco Crew yourself, you can find it over on Itch, and you can find a direct link to it from the creator's Twitter page, which is, you know, Decker the Wolf, which will be linked down in the description. Again, this is a paid visual novel. So if you would like to at least support Decker, or if you want to buy the visual novel and read it yourself before I, you know, can finish it on YouTube, then, you know, just go ahead. It's only $5. You could give them more too if you want. It's just, you know, $5 is the set price. Um, but yeah. And, um, yeah. <laughs> I also have a coffee in case you want to, you know, support me, you know, which I really appreciate. And there are people that are doing it and I really, really appreciate that a lot. Trust me. I, I really, really appreciate it. <laughs> and, um, I guess that's it for now and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.